Hi, my name is Rayvon Johnson, and this is my H-E-E-N-T video. I'm going to scan the room. Okay. So before I go into the patient's room, what I'm going to do is check the patient's chart. Once I check the patient's chart, I'm going to walk in, I'm going to provide patient privacy, I'm going to perform hand hygiene, and I'm going to introduce myself, and I'm going to identify the patient by two identifiers. Hi, my name is Rayvon Johnson. I'm going to be a nurse today. How are you feeling? Good. Okay. Can you identify yourself by name and date of birth? Jackie, 11 Okay. And on a pain level scale from zero being no pain at all and 10 being the worst pain you ever experienced, what pain level would you say you're at today? Zero. Okay. And what brings you in today? Uh, just a checkup. Just a checkup. Okay. So just speaking to the patient walking into the room, I noticed that the patient is alert and oriented times three. Um, looking at the patient's appearance, the patient is dressed appropriately for the weather, which is no goodness good. Um, can you let me know where you're at? I'm in my home. Okay, and what year is it? 2020. And who's the president? Donald Trump. Okay, so the patient is alert and oriented by person, place, and time. So what I'm going to do is I am going to perform a head assessment on you. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions and I'm going to be filling around and just doing an inspection, okay? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to palpate the head. I'm going to look and make sure if there, if I see any lumps, bumps, infestations, I'm going to check and see if there's been any hair loss and if the hair is evenly distributed. Have you noticed any hair loss lately? No. Okay, and have you had any past head trauma, concussions, or have you had any surgeries on your head? No. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate and I'm going to look through the patient's hair and I'm going to make sure I don't see any lice I'm going to make sure I don't see any hair loss and that I do not see. I don't see any bumps or any lumps or any lesions. Okay, so that aspect, that's good. Um, have you had any problems with your smell lately? No. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that's on cranial nerve one, which is olfactory. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the patient's nose and I'm going to look in the cavity and see if there's any redness, swelling, discharge, and have do a patency check. So what I'm gonna have you do, I want you to take your, your fingers, cover one nostril, and I want you to breathe in and out. Okay, and do the other side for me. Any difficulties breathing in and out? No. Okay, so I'm gonna look in the nose with my pen light. I want you to look up for me. Okay, so I don't notice any redness or swelling or any um, discharge at all. So that's cranial nerve one is intact. Have you had any problems with your vision? Have you noticed any blurry vision? When was the last time you had went to the eye doctor? I um, haven't noticed any problems with my vision. Last time I went to the doctor was two years ago. Okay, so another way to check for cranial nerve two is to do a Snellen exam where the patient will have a chart that they'll be focused on with one hand covering one eye. So cranial nerve two is intact. The patient haven't noticed any difficulty in the vision, um, which is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for your eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to check for perma, and I'm also going to um, size her pupils and see if they accommodate with light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pen light, and my pen light have different sizes, and I'm going to measure the pupils. And her measurement of the pupils seems to be around a four um, millimeter pupil gauge. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shine a light on the side, okay? And I just want you to focus. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I put the light on the side of the eyes, the pupils did dilate bilaterally, which is good. So I want you to focus on the clock over there. And then when you see my pen light, I want you to focus on the pen light, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the patient did um, accommodate to the pen.
pin light. Next thing I'm going to do is the six cardinal gazes. So I want you to focus on this pin light, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is, um, that's intact with six cardinal gazes. Another thing I'm going to check for is I'm going to have the patient or I will pull the patient's eyelids down and we're going to look at the conjunctiva. And I'm going to see if I notice any redness, swelling, or any discharge. The thing that we want to see is it's pink and a little bit of moist, which is regular for the conjunctiva. So I'm going to pull your eyelids down. Look up for me a little bit. Okay, so I don't notice any redness, any swelling. Have you noticed any problems with your eyes? Do you notice any discharge lately? Any crusting? No. No? Okay. So I'm um, just looking at the eyes. I'm looking at the sclera. And the sclera does not have any yellowish, greenish color to it. It is white, so that's good. So cranial nerve 3, 4, and 6, six is intact. Um, the next thing I'm going to check for is cranial nerve 5, which is the TMJ. And I'm going to palpate the joint. Have you noticed any problem opening and closing your mouth? No. Any tightness? No. Okay. I want you to open and close. Okay, so as I did that, I didn't notice any tightness or I haven't heard any clicking. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want you to close your eyes and I want you to let me know the sensations that you feel if they're sharp or dull. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, sharp. Dull. Sharp. Sharp. Dull. Sharp. Okay, so that's cranial nerve five. That's intact. The next cranial nerve I'm going to check is cranial nerve seven. Cranial nerve seven is the facial nerve. And just looking at the patient's face, I'm looking at the eyebrows, I'm looking at the eyes, I'm looking at the lips to see if they're dry. Um, I'm kind of trying to see if everything is symmetrical. Um, seeing if I notice any drooping, um, which is like Bell's palsy or signs of a stroke. The patient eyebrows, the eye seems to be symmetrical bilaterally. Another thing I want to check for is I want to make sure the ear and the eye is kind of measured um, on the same horizon, which if you move your head to the side, show the camera. It is um, symmetrical that way. So what I want you to do is I want you to raise your eyebrows and I want you to puff your cheeks. So as the patient raised her eyebrows, she raised them together, puffed the cheeks at the same time. Everything was symmetrical bilaterally on the face. Another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the resistance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hand against your face and then I want you to kind of push against it, okay? Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, so cranial nerve seven is intact. The next cranial nerve, which is cranial nerve eight, is the whisper test in Romberg. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand behind you and I want you to let me know which side you make you hear a sound, okay? Okay. Uh, right side, left side. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whisper a word and I want you to let me know what that word is. Dog, cat. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have the patient stand up and then what I want you to do is close your eyes. And what I'm looking for is seeing if the patient is rocking or swaying really, really bad. Um, this patient, she's pretty normal. You know, she's not rocking or um, falling over, which is good. So that means that cranial nerve 8 is intact. Okay, you can have a seat. Um, have you noticed any difference? Do you feel like you're at fall risk? Have you noticed any problems with your balance lately? No. Okay. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is check for the swallowing. Have you noticed any problems swallowing lately? No. Okay. Um, have you, do you have any trouble breathing? No. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the patient swallow and see if I notice any difficulties or any abnormalities. Okay. Can you swallow for me? How did that feel for you? It felt fine. Okay. So just looking at the neck as the person swallowed, everything seems to be normal. That's cranial nerve nine. Okay, so cranial nerve 10, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look inside the mouth, okay? Mm -hmm. And then what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the uvula and the soft palate to see if it moves towards the midline. I'm going to check and see if the patients still have their tonsils, and then I'm going to grade the tonsils. As I'm looking at that, I'm seeing if the back of the throat have any redness, swelling, discharge, drainage, anything that that's abnormal. Have you noticed any pain 
um, in your throat, any sore throats? No. And you still have your tonsils? Yes. No mouth surgery, nothing like that? No. So as I'm looking in the mouth, I am going to check to see if there's any lesions, any blisters, bumps, anything. Just looking around in the mouth and seeing if everything is intact. Okay, so when I, I want you to stick your tongue out and say, ah. Ah. Uh, stick it out more. Okay, so looking back there, the patients still have their tonsils. The tonsils does not seem to be swollen or discharged, so I would grade the tonsils as a zero. When she said I moved her tongue out, the uvula and the soft palate went towards the midline, which is good. Didn't see any redness, discharging, or swelling, which is another good thing. So cranial nerve 10 is intact. Cranial nerve 11 is the next thing that I'm going to check, and that is the accessory nerve. So I'm going to have the patient shrug their shoulders, and I'm going to put some resistance. I just want to check to see if the patient um, had any weaknesses or if it's on one side or just seeing if there's any weakness at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you turn your shoulders up and I want you to push against my hands. I don't notice any difficulty with the patients doing that. So cranial nerve 11 is intact. The next thing I'm going to do is do the last cranial nerve, which is the hypoglossum. And that's checking to see the tongue. So I do want you to repeat after me. I want you to say light, tight, dynamite. Light, tight, dynamite. Okay, so the patient was able to pronunciate those words correctly. So cranial nerve 12 is intact. So that's all the cranial nerves. Um, have you had any head injuries, any past traumas, any surgeries? No. Um, anything that you notice that may bother you no. or that you're concerned about? No. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to check for is I'm going to check for the frontal and the maxillary sinuses. Um, let me know when I'm palpating these sinuses if you feel any pain or tenderness. Okay. Okay, so this is your frontal. Any pain there? No. Any pain there? No. Okay, so... Um, frontal sinuses and maxillaries are good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate the lymph nodes. I want to see if I notice any lymph nodes being hard or being difficult to palpate. Let me know if you have any tenderness or any pain as I palpate these. So what I want to do is I'm going to have you move your head to the side a little bit. So I'm going to check for the preauricular, postauricular. Occipital, which is in the back right here. Okay, so then this area right here, I'm going to check right here for the posterior clavicular lymph node. Then I want you to make this ear touch the shoulder, and that is the deep cervical lymph node on the other side. Deep cervical, okay. Palpating on top of it is just the superficial clavicular. Then I want you to rotate your shoulders forward. And that's the supraclavicular lymph node. Then I'm going to check the three lymph nodes in the front. I'm going to check the tonsillar. Tonsillar, submandibular, and this is submental. Any problems, tenderness, palpating lymph nodes? No. I haven't noticed any lymph nodes as hard or I didn't really detect any lymph nodes, which is good. Next thing I'm going to check for is the skin. Have you noticed any dryness, any redness, discoloration, any moles, lesions of the skin? No. Okay. So looking at the patient, um, I don't notice any cyanosis, which is good. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm kind of going to feel to see if I notice any moisture. Okay, then I'm going to check for tubers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch the skin to see if the, the skin snaps back. So I'm going to take some skin right here. I'm going to pinch and the skin snap back, which is good. The next thing I want to check for is the ears. So if I had an otoscope, She's an adult. What I'll do is I'll take her penna and I'll pull it up and back. If she was a child, I'll pull down and back. So what I'm looking for in the ear is I'm checking for the tympanic membrane, making sure if I see a grayish color, any swelling, any drainage from the ears. Um, have you noticed any problems with your ears? No. Any drainage? No. Notice any leakages? No. Any problems hearing out of any of those ears? No. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you go to the side right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pinner, pull it up and pull it back. Take my otoscope if I have one and look inside the ear. A little cerulean there, but looking at the tympanic membrane, I don't notice any discoloration. It has its shiny gray color as it should. I don't see any drainage or any discharge. Same for the other ear. I'm gonna pull up and back. I'm gonna look inside. Again, I notice a little cerumen, but I can see the tympanic membrane. It's a shiny gray color, and there's no drainage or discharge. Okay, so anything else you would like me to know? Uh, no. Okay, so if this patient was inpatient, what I would do is I will leave both top rails up, lower the bed as low as I can to prevent a fall, a fall risk for the patient. Make sure I have the call light for the patient close enough so it can be in reach. And I will ask the patient, is there anything else that you think I should know or that you're concerned about? No. Okay. Um, all right. So another thing I would do is before I move out, I would wash my hands um, before I leave the room. But anything else, make sure everything's good for the patient. And that's it. That's the end of my head, ears, eyes, nose, and throat assessment.